this is our final script for our game. So here we have our Tetris object. Create Tetris objects script folder and inside of it create this script. So first here we are going to have a float variable that's going to be named last fall and it's equal to 0f at the moment. This is going to be time.time .time since well last fall of our game object which we're going to see a little bit later. Now we are going to create a well a function that's going to return a boolean and this is going to be is valid grid position. So inside of this function what we are going to do is we are going to check if our next position is actually valid where we want to move our game object. So here we are going to say for each and here I'm going to say transform child in our transform. So for each transform child that we have in the transform because this is going to be attached on our groups so our Tetris groups and they have child objects. So for each child in their transform what we are going to do but before that here I'm going to say return true and here what we are going to do is we are going to create a vector 2 which is going to be V and it's equal to our matrix grid that around and we are going to use around vector passing our child so child that position in order to round that vector and we explain what our round function does here actually so moving forward what we are going to do is we are going to test if we are in the same position so here we are going to say if our matrix so matrix grid that is inside the border so excuse me I said if we are in the same position but actually we are testing if it's inside the border and I don't actually need these curly brackets but I'm used to typing them if we are in the inside the border then we are going to return false so return false because it's not a valid grid position if we are inside the border that practically means we are going outside here so we see that we have these red lines which are the border if we are going to go inside of the border it's not a valid valid excuse me grid position so going back here also what we need to test we need to test if our block is in the grid but it's not actually in the same group so how can we do that well here we can say if our matrix grid that grid and the element that's at and we need to cast this as an int so we need to say v dot x and again int and here we need to say v dot y so the element practically using these and we are casting it to the integer or to an integer because as I said we need to round them so if the element that's at this well index x and y is not equal to null meaning that we have a game object and also we need to copy and paste this again so the same element and here let me just go so and the same element also that parent is not equal to transform so if the parent of this game object is not equal to our transform holding this script meaning this game object is not null so it's inside of the grid but his parent is not equal to the parent holding this script then return false because that's also not a valid grid position we cannot move that game object we cannot go inside of it practically because as I said it's not part of the same game object but it's inside of the grid so this is what we are actually doing here so testing if that game object is in the grid but not in the same group and if neither of these are not true so practically if we are not inside the border if this also here is not true then we are simply going to return true here we have a valid grid position here we are going to create another function which is going to call be called excuse me update ma matrix so here what we are going to do is first we are going to remove the children from our game object so here we're going to say for int y is equal to zero as long as y is less than our matrix grid so not matrix 4x4 four four, matrix grid dot column we are going to say plus plus y 
Next, we are going to say for int x is equal to zero. As long as x is less than matrix grid dot row, we are going to say plus plus x. Now what we are going to check, because we are going to remove the children, we need to say if our matrix and the grid, so matrix grid, and the element that's an x and the y is not equal to null. So if it's not equal to null, because we want to remove it, we don't want to remove the elements that are already null because they are removed. Now we need to remove the elements that are not equal to null. Next, we need to perform again a check. So if our matrix grid dot grid and the element that's at x and then the y dot parent is equal to the transform. So practically, if the parent of this element is equal to the element that's holding this script, meaning we have one group and those are the children of this group. Then what we are going to say is we are going to say matrix grid dot grid, the element that's at x and the y is equal to null. Now we are removing that element. Practically, that's what we are doing here. Now what we need to do is we need to add children in our, well, matrix. So here we need to say for each transform child, so child in our transform. So for each child that we have in our transform right here, what we are going to do is we are going to say vector V is equal to matrix grid dot round again. So round vector, and we are going to pass child dot position. So child position to round that vector. And now our matrix grid that grid and here what we are going to do is we are practically going to pass so not grid so let me just type it right so grid like this here we are going to pass our int again casting our v dot x comma again our integer casting our v dot y so this element is equal to child so practically here what we are doing is we are first rounding the position of this child. After that, we are practically rounding its x and the y and using that as an index for our grid and that's equal to that child. So that's how we are updating the matrix grid. First, we are removing the children that are not equal to null and that their parent is equal to transform. We are removing those children. After that, we are adding new children. So practically, as I said, we are first rounding the coordinates of that child, then using those coordinates again, while well, rounding them with an integer, with a cast, and the element that's at that index is now equal to child. So this child right here. And that's how we are updating this matrix right here. Now that we have these two main functions that are going to be in our Tetris, well, object script, now we can program the movement of our, well, game objects, which is going to be here in the update function. Now, here in the update function, what we are going to do is we are going to check for our arrow inputs. So here I'm going to say if our input dot get key down, passing here key code, and it's going to be our left arrow key. So if we touch our left arrow key, what we are going to do is we are going to use our transform that position. We are going to say plus equals new vector three because we are moving it in the left. That's the negative side and we are moving by one unit. So negative one and for the X and for, or excuse me, for the Y and for the Z it's going to be, well, zero because we are moving it well on the X axis on the left and moving it by one unit. We are simply going to add to it negative one. Next, what we are going to do, we are going to check if our is valid grid position. So if the grid position is valid, where we want to move our game object, then we are going to update our matrix grid. Otherwise, if the position is not valid, we are simply going to reverse it because, well, we cannot move in that position. So we are simply going to add positive one in order to, well, make this null so practically to nullify this what we did here so again we are checking if we touch the left arrow key we need to move left we know that the left side is the negative side 
and we are moving it by one unit which is 1. So we are simply going to pass negative 1 here and 0, 0 for y and z. Next we are going to check if that position where we want to move, so this position right here where we added negative 1, if it's a valid position then simply update the matrix grid. Otherwise if it's not valid reverse what we did here by simply adding positive 1 which is going to well restore the previous position practically. We are going to do the same thing here so we are going to say else if our input dot get key down is equal to key code dot right arrow so if we are touching the right arrow we are going to do the same thing so I'm simply going to copy and paste this right here so let me just copy and paste it but here we are going to add one because we know right is in the positive we are moving by one unit then we are adding one and if we want to reverse it we need to add negative one because we need to go back so again if we are moving right add positive one on the x-axis check if the grid position is valid if it's true update that matrix grid if it's not true reverse it by adding negative one here we are going to check else if our input that get key down is equal to key code up so up arrow if we touch the up arrow we want to rotate our transform so if we touch it we want to say transform dot rotate and here we need to pass our new vector 3 0 and 0 for the x and for the y negative 90 for our z-axis because we want to rotate the z-axis only that way we can well reposition our game objects so that we can fit them in our grid again we need to check if our grid position is valid so if we have a valid grid position then update the matrix so update matrix grid so let me just go here let me just copy this because for some reason this is not going to well fill up practically if we have a valid grid position update the matrix grid else if we don't have a valid position reverse so here what I'm going to do is simply well add positive to the rotation again so practically we are doing the same thing for the right and the well left arrow but here we are simply rotating it so we are going to rotate it by negative 90 if the grid position is valid update the matrix grid if it's not valid reverse it by adding positive rotation practically finally here we are going to test else if our input that get key down is key code down arrow if that's true or if our time dot time minus our fall or last fall is greater than or equal to one so if these two conditions are fulfilled what we are going to do is we are going to move our object down so regardless if we press down or we press the down key or down arrow or we don't press it we are going to move our object down because it needs to go down that's why we are testing if our time minus last time since fall or last fall time is greater than or equal to one so here we are going to say transform that position plus equals new vector 3 so vector 3 and here because we are moving it down we need to pass the negative one for the y-axis so we are moving it down as I said passing well negative one because well we are moving it by one unit of, of course excuse me here we are going to check again if our grid position is valid so if we have a valid grid position then update the matrix grid else if we don't have the valid grid position so else what we are going to do here our game is practically finished we are going to see here transform that position plus equals new vector 3 and here we are going to say 0 1 and 1 to reverse it because we cannot move down anymore because of that we are going to call our matrix grid destroy whole rows this is going to destroy our whole rows what we are also going to do is we are going to spawn new well game objects so here we are going to say 
find game object of type and we need to pass the type so we want the spawner dot spawn random so spawn a new well tetris object and because this script cannot move anymore or this game object cannot move anymore we are going to say enabled is equal to false because there is no need in this script to continue to work because as i said we cannot move down anymore and let me just give a little bit space here or just rearrange these lines here outside of our else statement we are going to say our last fall is equal to time dot time because well this is how we are going to or this is really important because this is how we are going to move our game object down because here we are going to check if time minus last fall is greater than, so time that's time, minus last fall is greater than or equal to one, then we are going to move our game object down. And we need to update that time right here in order for this to work. So again, we are going to move it down by adding one unit, negative one, at the y axis. Check if the grid position is valid, meaning we can move even further down if that's true update the matrix if that's not true reverse it by adding positive one on the y-axis delete whole rows and then spawn a new random well tetris game object and enable the script because we cannot move this script further down or this game object holding this script cannot move anymore finally we are done with our game even though it seems simple we still have these complicated things that we well needed to calculate anyway let us finally test it out so we can go back here and before we run the game what we need to do is go in our prefabs folder and on each of our tetris objects attach our tetris script or tetris object script so simply attach it if i run the game now we see that our well Tetris object is falling down. I can also move it left and right. We cannot go outside of the border, which we see. We touch the red line and we cannot go outside of it. If I press up, we are rotating the game object and we cannot rotate the cube. So if I go back here, again, we cannot rotate the cube. So let me just wait for one. So we see that we are rotating this one. So again, practically what we are doing here is we are, well, moving them down each time and let me just pause the game. So each time we will calculate here or check if time dot time minus last fall is greater than or equal to one, then we are going to move it down, which we saw here that our game object is moving down. And notice now when I put down this one like this, because I want to rotate it and I'm not touching anything. When we hit the ground, we have the whole row and call or whole rows here, which are going to be destroyed, which we saw here. So when we fill whole rows, we are going to destroy them. So we are going to see that again, when I fill this hole here, or excuse me, we're not going to see it because here we have empty places. So let me just try to fill it again. So now we are going to see it when I fill it with these well blocks here, we are going to destroy these rows, which we well practically just saw. Let me try to destroy one more row or excuse me. Yeah, row, I wanted to say column, but it's actually a row. So here again, let me try this one. So one more time, let's see it. And we have destroyed our well row. Practically, as I said, we are done with the game. Go crazy with it. Tell your friends, tell your grandma if you want to brag about it. Anyway, we have created one of the most popular games that is out there. So practically Tetris is, I don't know, 20 or 30 years here. I think the game was published in 1980s or so anyway we saw the techniques that we need to use and how we are moving it let me just run the game again we see how we are moving it by one unit so notice it here so by one unit left or right so again as i said congratulations we have finished our game and let's now move forward